Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Victory Church. Today, January 20th, 2019, we are about to do our worship service number 121. So we will pray and we will give thanks to the Lord for this day. So please join me in prayers and let's stand up. We say hello to our viewers and listeners and thank you for watching and thank you for your comments and likes. So join us. Let's pray all together. Dear Lord, we thank you for your immense mercy, your daily mercy, Lord, that is being poured out down every day. And we receive that mercy today, Lord. We love you. We adore you. And we want to ask you, Lord, to receive the songs that we bring to you, Lord, as part of our worship. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You're calling me over, you're pulling me close, with love you surround me, you give me hope. You're taking me deeper, you're making me whole, with grace you redeem. You restore my soul, now I'm made new because of you. your hands you hold me and you set me apart now I
Yes, Lord, we are in your presence, willing to listen to your voice, willing, Lord, to, to hear your commands. 
willing, Lord, to submit ourselves to your will, to surrender, because that is what really matters, Lord, what you have to say. So here we are, Lord, each one of us trusting entirely in your will, Lord, putting our lives in your hands one more time, dedicating our lives to you, Lord, in full devotion and holiness and sanctification. Because we don't care, Lord, for the things of this world. They are not important, Father. But what you have in heaven, Lord, that is what really matters in life. Is you, Lord. Not even what is there, but you yourself, Father. So here we are, Lord. We lift up our hands, we open our hearts, and we tell you, Father, how much we love you, how much we adore you. That you are wonderful to us, Lord. That you are beautiful to us. That we are so grateful, Father, that one day you rescued us because we were lost and we were blind. But you took the time, Lord, to come down and reach out and save us. So here we are, Lord, so grateful that you are giving us eternal life in your Son, Jesus. So grateful, Father, for a new day of life, for a new week. And we want to ask you, Lord, that you will speak to us through your word today. We prepare our hearts to hear your word. May your Holy Spirit will give us the understanding, Lord, of what you want us to learn today. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. Well, hello everyone. Very, very happy to see each one of you here in the church today. We are going to talk today about a topic that is a problem for many, many people. The topic is rejection. How we feel when we are rejected by others. How we feel when uh, somebody will even, uh, even mistreat us for whatever characteristic that we have. Therefore, it is necessary for us to find what the scripture says about it and how we can be prepared to manage rejection. Are you ready for this message? Yeah. There you go. Let's start with the verse in John chapter 6, verse 37. The Father gives me my people. Every one of them will come to me. I will always accept them. Words of the Lord Jesus. John chapter 6, verse, verse 37. We need to understand that the heart of our Lord is a loving heart. We need to understand that from the Lord's perspective, there is no other thing but love and acceptance for each one of us. That is his supernatural nature. His heart is to, to love, to accept us, and actually to embrace us and empower us so we can be the people that he wants us to be. So I would like you to say with me this sentence in the screen. The Lord God does not reject me. Let's say it again. The Lord God does not reject me. He doesn't do that to us. Don't you feel happy about this? Think about this. The Lord God does not reject me. But why people feel rejected then? Because they don't know what the scripture says. The scripture is telling us that he always will accept us. Always. Because it's his supernatural nature. Say with me this next sentence, please. The Lord God is not against me. Let's say it again. 
the Lord God is not against me. Those are the two things that people deal with most of the time. The first thing they think, they feel that the Lord is rejecting them. They, they, they think that they feel that the Lord is always kind of pushing them away because they are not holy enough or good enough, godly enough, like they don't have the right to be close to God. And the other thing that they think is that the Lord is against them. Some people even say, you know, since I remember when I was little, I felt that things went wrong for me. Things were bad to me, to my family. It, it, it's like uh, the whole world was against me. Have, have you heard people saying that? They even say, you know, so many bad things happened to my family. Some people even wonder, why do you think that I was born into this family? Why not into that family? And there is a constant oppression in their minds and in their emotions thinking, the Lord God doesn't like me. He is against me. And we need to remove that from our minds. As believers, we are forgiven, we are accepted, and the Lord wants us to, to live a life feeling accepted by Him. We find in God our true Father. It's in Him that you will find your true Father. Other individuals go today even to websites trying to find their ancestry line. They say, I, I am X percentage uh, from this country, this other percentage from this, uh, this other country, and uh, I am half this, half that, and whatever. They are trying to find in their ancestors the answer to something that is spiritual. It's a spiritual. It's a need to feel accepted. And the only one that can make you feel accepted, really, is the Lord God. And it's in Him that you will find your true Father. And how do we find that? How is that the, the good Lord can be for you the true Father? You know, one of the things that you need to really do every day is in your prayer time, talk to the Lord as your Father, not just as God, the creator of heaven and earth. When you start talking to Him as your Father, your true Father, you will start to develop a different relationship with Him. And actually, you will start to hear more and more of His voice. Friends, I have said to you many times how important it is for each one of us to read the scripture every day. You pray and read the scripture. We all know that there is a wonderful, powerful, almighty God somewhere in heaven. We know that. We sing songs to him. We do many things for him. And we say, praise the name of our Lord. Amen. We all believe that. Believers, we, we believe that. We proclaim that. We declare that. We say, there is a God in heaven. One day I'll see him. We say all those things. But when we are thinking of God as a such, as the almighty God, sometimes disconnects us from that personal relationship between him as your father and yourself as a child of the Lord. This connects us. Because you, you probably may, may be thinking, he is too busy to take care of my needs. And that is not true. The Lord is interested in developing a relationship with you and helping you with your needs, what, whatever your needs are. He wants to take care of your needs. And he hears your prayers. But what is what really happens in this world today? A lot of people, and perhaps you that is watching right now and listening, you are one of those who you say, 
I pray all the time. But honestly, do you really pray all the time? Or do you just think that you are praying? Because let me tell you this. When you are praying to the Lord God Almighty, He listens. And because He loves you, He will help you in everything that you need. That is what the Lord does. So the question actually goes back to you. When you pray, do you believe that He is listening? He's paying attention to your needs? Do you feel His presence? Now, once we pray, once we say all those things, and you express to Him what is what you need, here's the deal. He will talk to you through His Word. And that, my friends, is the problem that we have. We want to tell Him our things, but we don't want to hear or listen what he has to say. Because we want to do what we want to do instead of letting him speak to us through his word. But if we are praying to him and asking him to help us in everything and you connect with the Lord as your father, he will speak to you through his word. You open his word. You open the Bible, you will read passages in the scripture that will tell you exactly what he wants you to hear that very moment. And that is the answer. Because the communication between us and the Lord has two ways. What I say to him and what he has to tell me. So right now, just right now, the Lord is talking to you and he's telling you something. What is he telling you? He's telling you, read my word. <clears throat> and here is the next challenge. Once we hear what he has to say, do we do what he's telling us to do? What do you think? Do we really do what he's telling us to do? We read the scripture, we find comfort in the scripture, we find solutions in, of many, many of our problems just by reading the scripture. The Lord will move in your life. He is your true father. You read. You listen. You pay attention. And you do what it says. But if you don't do what he says. Do you think that he will see you as an obedient child? What do you think? He is telling you what to do through the scripture. In fact, you have a perception in your heart. You think, yeah, I think it's, that is what God wants me to do. But the question is, do you do it? So you, you see the problem. Here we are. We say, God is my father. I go to God in prayer. I pray all the time. Really? Really? Well, let's suppose you do. You pray constantly. God, help me. Please, Lord, help me with this. Please, Lord, help me with that. Okay, you are talking to him. Fantastic. Are you listening his answers? Or you are just this kind of person that just speaks what you want to tell him, but you don't want to hear what he has to say to you. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening. I read the scripture and I am understanding the scripture. I understand what he's trying to tell me. Okay, I got it. Great. Step number two. But now, do you do what he is telling you to do? Because the truth of the matter is this. A lot of people in the world are going through so many difficulties. They claim that they have a relationship with God. They say they pray, but deeply in their hearts. This is, listen to this, guys. Listen to this. Deeply in their hearts, they don't want to do what the Lord says. They already made a decision. Basically, it's a negotiation that they are trying to do with the Lord. You know what is, what is happening, really? It's awful. But a lot of people are trying to manipulate God. Because there is a lot of manipulation all over the world. In all relationships, you see that constantly. 
people trying to manipulate others in many ways. And some people are trying to manipulate God, the Lord God Almighty. Forgive me, but is it possible? Listen to my question, please. Is it possible that you are trying to manipulate God? Think about it. Because that is one of the biggest problems in the world today. Manipulation. And people that claim to be believers, they say, yes, I pray. And all those things, but there is not much reading of the scripture. And there is just a little of doing of what the scripture tells us to do. You see? But those who are praying, they have a connection with the Lord. And they have that relationship, father-child with the Lord. And they hear the voice of the Lord all the time. They are reading the scripture. They treasure the scripture. And whatever they learn from the scripture, they do it. Because what is the point of learning and becoming so knowledgeable about the scripture? And we know... Not this height, but this height, or this height, or whatever height of knowledge about the Bible. But, but we don't do it. What is the point of all this knowledge? You know? What we learn, we should do it. And when you do that, listen carefully, please. When you do that, your relationship with the Lord is true. Is truly a relationship, father, child, obedient child. That obedience has to be installed in your heart. It has to be installed. Otherwise, you are not going to move forward to what the Lord has for you. And what is the most wonderful thing that you can have with the Lord? Is a perfect, perfect relationship with him. Well, I have a great relationship with the Lord. Some people say. Oh, really? Yeah. But it is possible. But let me ask you this. If you say that you have a great relationship with the Lord, do you really think that God is really happy with you when you deliberately, intentionally do not want to do what He says you should do? You know it. The passages are there. The scripture is talking to you. The Holy Spirit is moving you. You know there are some things that you've got to do. But you just refuse. You are so rebel about it. And you say, no, I'm not going to do that. It's too hard. It's way too hard. I don't want to do it. I prefer to do things my way. And here's the Lord looking at you with that attitude. And you say you have a great relationship with him. Do you really think it's a great relationship? That is what I want you to think, guys. The great relationship with, with the Lord comes as a result of you doing what He says. What the scripture is telling us to do. Because then is when that true Father helps us to have what? Our true identity. Without a true identity... You are going to struggle with rejection everywhere you go. You will struggle with that. But once you have that true identity established in yourself, within yourself, you know who you are in the Lord. You know He is your Father. You know you are doing the right thing. You know that you can go to Him in prayer any moment. You know He listens to you. You know you are listening to him. You know you are doing what he is telling you to do. You see, that makes you an obedient child. And that gives you this true identity. And when you have that, you will be able to manage rejection out there. Because people, even those who say, I don't have a problem, you know, I understand the concept, but I truly don't have a problem. Even those who say that, deeply in their hearts, they are frightened. Deeply in their hearts. In the solitude, where there is nobody around, they have trouble 
to deal with the loneliness and the quiet time between them and the Lord. Why is that? Because they are not doing what he is telling you today to do. Do you see? But the true identity comes so well in your being and, and you are comfortable with the Lord, with yourself. You, you know he is with you. You know you are doing the right thing in everything. You just love that feeling. And then it doesn't matter what happens out there. It doesn't matter what happens. You will handle rejection. And we will talk about it. Now, do you think that the Lord can reject some people? What do you think? Well, maybe, yes, no. Okay, let's see what the scripture says about it. Okay? This is the story of someone who was appointed and anointed to be the first king of Israel. The prophet Samuel anointed him to be the first king, Saul. But what happened with Saul? One day, he received orders of something that he needed to do. The Lord told him what to do. And Saul said, uh, I don't think it's necessary to do it exactly that way. I think I have a better plan. You know, if I do it like the Lord is telling me to do, maybe it won't work well. <laughs> it doesn't sound familiar to you? Maybe your way of thinking about certain things? I'm asking. Yeah. Th doesn't sound familiar to you? Those ideas in your mind that you are thinking? You know what? Uh, yeah, I read it. I understand. But maybe I have a, a, a better angle here. Well, here's the answer to the Lord, from the Lord to this guy. He says, I regret that I have made Saul king because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. First Samuel, first 15, 11a. First Samuel 15, 23b. Because you have rejected the word of God, the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. So the question is, does the Lord reject some people? The answer is yes, he does. And why is that? Because of disobedience. Disobedience. I think I know better than the Lord, is what some people think. You watch out. You be careful with that idea in your heart. Listen to this concept, friends. It's very powerful. For rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance, like the evil of idolatry. 1 Samuel 15, 23a. Oh, that's, that's tough. That's tough. So you see, in order to, to develop that identity that will help you to handle rejection everywhere, if happens, there, there is one condition here, and the condition is obedience. I, I have to do what he says. You know what is wonderful? Sometimes, friends, we don't even need to find the scripture. We don't need to find a verse in the Bible. There is a voice, very, very soft, gentle, but firm voice in our hearts telling us, D don't do that. D don't, don't do that. D don't, don't go there. D don't do that. That voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit just telling us, no, no, no. And, and you know what? That's the problem. That's the problem when we don't want to obey Him. You know, for those who are not believers, and you know that there are even some people that are not believers, that they listen to our services. Yes, they are. And some of them, they even make comments in our videos. And of course, all those comments are being removed because we are not going to allow those things. However, even for those who do not believe, even for them, there is a curiosity of that voice. Is, is that voice really God talking to me? And the answer is yes. Oh, yes. The Lord is talking to you. If you are doubting about something that you are doing, if you are not sure about the path that you are going, 
Maybe you are not listening to the Lord. And you should be careful about that. I will tell you this thing that is so simple and so powerful at the same time. Pride is a barrier. While humility is a bridge. When there is pride within us. If you have pride in your heart and you feel this and that, but you are prideful, especially, listen please, listen to this, especially towards the Lord. How? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Say that again, Gian. I didn't get it. Say that again. I will say it to you. When there is pride in your heart towards the Lord. Okay. Explanation, please. I don't get it. I love God. How come I should have pride towards the Lord? Well, there is pride when you don't want to submit yourself to his authority. You see that? When you refuse doing what he is telling you to do, you are being prideful. You say, no, I'll do it my way. Pride is a barrier. And when... When you are disobeying the Lord, when you are not in good terms with the Lord, when you are not doing the right thing, when you are not obeying his word, there is a feeling of uncertainty in your heart and fear. And it's just awful. You cannot operate freely because you know something is not right. Pride is a barrier. The blessings from God are not going to flow entirely to your life while you are disobeying his word. You can fight all that you want. You can try everything you want with, with whatever is the deal. But let me tell you this. Humility is a bridge. Because what is the definition of being humble? Is the one who acknowledges authority. It has nothing to do with the vehicle you drive or the brand of your watch or the amount of capital that you have accumulated. It has nothing to do with those things. It has nothing to do with diamonds or gold. It has nothing to do with money or clothes. Humility is a condition of our hearts where we submit ourselves to the authority of the Lord God Almighty. That is being humble. And that humility is a bridge that connects you with the Lord, while pride is a barrier. So we have to be careful about that. Because with the humility that we present to the Lord, that we carry in our hearts, we have his approval, we have his okay, we have his acceptance. He is our true father, we have our true identity. Then, my friend, you will be able to handle rejection everywhere. You will not be confused about rejection. Luke 14, 11. You want to read it with me? Everyone who makes themselves important will be humble. We will make humble. But everyone who makes themselves humble will be made important. So wherever you are, if, if, you, if you are humble, the Lord is going to lift you up. He, he will take you to better places all the time. He will help you. He will restore you. He will do wonderful things for you if you are humble. But if you are prideful, boom, here's all the king. Uh, I'm not sure if that is the best thing to do here. Let's do this. And the Lord said, because you disobeyed me, out. And the next king is coming. But everyone who makes themselves humble will be made important. Is what the scripture says. Now, 
Once you understand this, the importance of being humble and obedient to the Lord and to his word, now we can handle better rejection. And I will give you reasons why sometimes we are in a test. You know, rejection sometimes is a test of our faith in God. Mm -hmm. You might be tested in your faith in God while somebody is rejecting you. Why? Because if somebody is rejecting you, you have the opportunity to go to that quiet place of prayer and talk to the Lord and ask Him to help you and say, Father, this person is horrible to me. I have done nothing wrong to this person, but why this person is mistreating me this way? Why this person is making me feel so little? So rejected. Father, what is wrong here? Sometimes it's just a test of your faith in God. So if you go through some seasons of rejection from people, maybe it's just a test of your faith in the Lord. And you just go back to Him and say, Lord, am I okay? Are we okay, Lord? <laughs> Do you have anything against me, Father? Is there anything that I'm not doing right? And if there is something, the Lord will let you know. You will know it and you say, you know what? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. You know, I already know. I'm doing this wrong and I want to tell you this, Father. I'm going to correct this. Other than that, Father, is there anything else? <laughs> it's a test of faith sometimes, the rejection. Other times, it's just a test of humility. Somebody rejects you. You go to a place, whether it's a social event, or you are in a store, or you are in church, or you are with your family and friends, and, and someone is rejecting you, ignoring you. you. You go where some people are, and they turn their backs to you, and they walk a, in a different direction, and... And you know they are rejecting you. Sometimes it's a test of humility. It's, it's, it's just a test to see if you are able to not make a, a scene of that thing. Not going into a drama, right? Oh, they are rejecting me. You know? No. Sometimes it's just a test of humility. If you are okay with the Lord, probably rejection could be a test of your faith. Probably could be a test of your humility. However, <clears throat> also could be a test of discernment. You know, discernment is a beautiful thing that we believers can be blessed with by the Holy Spirit which is that guidance that is not written and is not being said. You just know it in your heart. The Holy Spirit will guide you to make some decisions through discernment. It's that perception that you have sometimes. You just know it. Well, sometimes you are being rejected as a test of your discernment. And make a decision. Because sometimes, friends, you know, we think that it's okay that people will mistreat us. It's okay that people will not take us. Maybe you, you, my friend, you may think it's okay that somebody can push you away so you will feel more humble. But listen, sometimes you have to use discernment and say to yourself, perhaps... Pushing this relationship or pushing this business or pushing this career or pushing this, trying to accomplish something is not what the Lord wants you to do. So you have to use discernment and say, no, it, it's obvious. This is not the route that I should go. Discernment. Rejection is being used sometimes just to show you these are not the doors that I want you to go. I'm going to close these doors. <laughs> the Lord can close some doors for you 
So you can walk in a different direction and other doors will be open for you. But in all times, my friends, you do not lose your joy in the Lord. Never. You have to be careful with bitterness. Watch out. Do not become a bitter person. No. No, 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 no. They reject you. People don't want to be with you for whatever reason. Well, you are okay with the Lord. You are doing what the Lord is telling you to do. You have your true identity. You know what is right and what is wrong. You do what is right. You worship the Lord. You trust in the Lord. And still there is some rejection there. Okay, well, let it go. Don't become bitter for, for that reason. You know? And it happens sometimes. You have to go to certain places and uh, <laughs> with certain people that you already know. They will reject you. They will just ignore you intentionally. Well, just lay with that sometimes. If you have to do it. And don't become bitter for that reason. It's, it's the opposite. You need to learn to forgive more and more. You know, the, the more that you forgive, your mind is clear. You forgive and let it go. You know, they, they don't appreciate you. They reject you. Well, you forgive. And learn to live one day at a time. Today is what you have. Enjoy this day. And how do you enjoy this day? Remember what we have said here. We need to be happy with the Lord. You see, it's all about Him. Everything that you are living, all the experiences, it's all about Him. Whatever is what you, you are going through, you just go back to Him. Lord, here I am. And you know what, Father? I'm going to be humble in your presence. You know, sometimes it could be that we are applying for a loan for a home, and the answer is no. Sometimes we are applying for a new job, and the answer is no. Sometimes we are trying to, to have a date, and the answer is no. Many things can happen, and the answer is no, no, and we don't get what we want. We need to learn to be happy with the Lord regardless, regardless. We need to learn to be happy with the Lord. You know, after Saul, king of Israel, there was another guy who was called to be king, David. And he, he was a special, very, very special. He was, uh, he was a person that learned to put all his trust in the Lord. He was taking care of the shepherd. The, I mean, of the sheep. He was a shepherd. He was taking care of the sheep by himself with a swing, killing animals. A sling, sorry, killing animals. And with a harp and lyre, whatever instruments he played, and singing to the Lord and saying prayers. I want you to picture that. You know, in the solitude, he didn't become bitter in the middle of the task that he was forced to do because others didn't want to do it he did not become bitter you know what he learned to talk to the lord to worship the lord there are many beautiful psalms that we can read but i want to share with you some verses from psalm 18. i love you lord you are my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my place of safety. He is my God, the rock I, I run to for my protection. He is my shield, by His power I am saved. He is my hiding place, high in the hills. I call to the Lord for help, and He saved me from my enemies. He is worthy of my praise. In my trouble I call to the Lord. Yes, I cried out to my God for help, there in his temple he heard my voice he heard my cry for help he reached down from above and grabbed me 
He pulled me from the deep water. He saved me from my powerful enemies who hated me. They were too strong for me, so He saved me. They attacked me in my time of trouble, but the Lord was there to support me. He was pleased with me, so He rescued me. He took me to a safe place. The Lord rewarded me for doing what is right. He was good to me because I am innocent. The Lord this, did this because I have obeyed Him. I have not turned against my God. I always remember His laws. I never rejected His rules. He knows I did nothing that was wrong. I have kept myself from sinning. Lord, You are faithful to those who are faithful. You are good to those who are good. You never do wrong to those who have done no wrong. But you outsmart the wicked, no matter how clever they think they are. You help those who are humble. You humiliate the proud. Lord, you provide the flame for my lamp. You, God, turn the darkness around me into light. Lord, you have given me your shield to protect me. You support me with your right hand. It is your help that has made me great. You cleared a path for my feet so that I could walk without stumbling and that is a prayer we can say when we put all our trust in the Lord but if you don't have that relationship with the Lord God I invite you to pray with me a simple prayer of repentance just say with me dear God please forgive me Lord I pray in the name of Jesus I believe that you already started a new season for me Thank you for your forgiveness. I love you, God. Receive that forgiveness from God today. Receive that peace that comes only from the Holy Spirit. He is worthy of all our praises. So we can all together say, I am forgiven and saved by faith in Jesus. My life is going to be great and blessed this year, 2019. Friends, thank you for coming up to church. You are blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have a beautiful week in Jesus' name. See you Sunday. Anytime my heart turns from darkness to light, anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight, anytime somebody lives to serve and not be served, I know, I know, I know.